Righto, today we have a Yaesu FT301 and uh, these were a um, fairly popular radio back in the late 70s, early 80s. I'm oh, being a bit um, average on my dates there on eras, but um, anyway, this one was um, sold to a friend of mine and um, part of a lineup and um, it's been here for quite a while to be honest and um, I've not wanted to really get into it, um, not because I'm lazy, I just know this one's going to be a hard one. <laughs> but on that point, I thought we'd just do an ad-lib video and say, well look, how do we start having a look? And um, I've had this on the bench for about two minutes and um, just kind of pulled one board out and just stripped it a bit just to um, so I can measure some voltages and bits. But um, quite seriously, here's some of the symptoms. So, no matter what we do here, we're on the extension speaker, no noise no matter what, no sound coming out of it and uh, that's not so good so, I'm sort of looking to go righto uh, what else can we do? well the next thing we want to do is say well okay there's no sound but does it actually receive because you know with troubleshooting we want to know as much as we can it's okay to know what we what we don't know but it's also important to know what we do know so let's find out what we do know let's go over to our analyzer and let's pump a whole stack of signal into it about a million microvolts at 14.4 and let's just see what we've got all right okay well um, sort of glad that happened um, at 14.4 megs we've got a um, carrier which should drop off as I go to the side of it like so and peak up and drop off as I go to the side of it that's it so and I'm pumping a quite a few microvolts at that 50 microvolts so um, um, but we can even say to ourselves um, obviously no audio there but we can even say to ourselves how well does it receive so let's have a look I'm down to 0.5 micro there micro sorry yeah look even though we can't hear anything I would say that receiver is oops sorry um, is reasonably reasonably good um, now we're not, ex we're not doing this to see how the receiver sensitivity is and how good it is or how good it's not we just simply want to know does it receive does even though we can't hear a thing coming out of it and a little bit of a beep noise you can hear coming is off my analyzer too by the way um, so the next thing we want to know is the uh, the big question well does it transmit now I've seen a few of these in my lifetime I was a young apprentice working on these and I can already tell you that no it won't trans well sorry no it won't modulate um, it'll transmit I bet you anyway let's have a look Let's just go up to our little fella over here, get a bit of carrier. Right, okay, so we're getting a few watts there, probably about 10 watts I'm guessing. Let me just change that scale. Yep, about 10 watts coming out of that. But I guarantee you, when I go to talk into it, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, and see how that down, no variation, no nothing, no, no, nothing. All right, okay, now let's go to sideband, and I would just about say positively, one, two, one, two, one, two, one two, one two, one two, one two. I'm just trying to see if I can flick the relay even, because we, we always want to see, you know, have we got a relay full? Now see how that power pops up there? I'm just getting about a, a watt or so of power. Well, that's that's just the relay clicking in, and then it, it just refuses to modulate, and um, that is uh, that is definitely the problem. Um, that we've now got two areas where we're able to be able to work out. Let me just turn this volume down on this thing. All right, that's turning the generator off, and you'll see the generator also turns the um, uh, the meter off because at the moment the meter is uh, just sitting there waiting for us to put a signal in and um, so we have this here we're basically on sideband see how it wants to flick in that's just the relay clicking in as we were talking about when we go to AM actually CW probably tr transmits as well is it no 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 it doesn't sorry I'm making a lie um, okay so there's AM there and um, you know it's getting 10 watts out on AM at the moment but no modulation so pretty much that tells us that we need to um, pull a board out and have a bit of a look and see what's going on and um, unfortunately um, I can tell you <laughs> what's going on before I even go crazy pulling out some of this stuff um, the radio has been over voltaged the power supply I measured the power supply voltage um, and it was ridiculously high and um, what's happened is somebody's left it on there to fry thinking that you know if they just warm it up enough that things should get better but no things don't get better they get worse 
and what they tend to do in these things is down the back of these things they um, um, they blow a few caps and they blow a few um, audio transistors and bits and pieces but it's really it's a bit of a painful one because you've got to go through and just keep on replacing parts you, you're forever sitting there with your multimeter and uh, sometimes it's just easier to replace all the caps and go right out um, because you know they've had you know a lot of these are 16 volt caps which uh, you know this just been fried with 25 volts um, so you know you can ch try you know chase your tail quite a bit um, if you're not careful so I won't bother taking you through that whole process right now but um, this is really more a video that just gets you to think about the processes so the processes here were let's find out if um, there's audio no there's no audio well is that because the receiver's dead or is that because the audio IC is dead or in this case transistor's dead um, in this case we proved that it had a signal coming through it and we were able to say well look at that it's um, it's able to receive actually it's able to receive quite well and then we said right okay have we got transmit now if we had have just relied on going to sideband and one two three four five we would have said no transmit but of course the common denominator here is the fact that a lot of radios source their audio um, from the audio IC itself or audio transistors. So um, I can't remember the 301 just exactly how they do this, to be honest, but I'm, I'm surmising that uh, if I remember back in my apprenticeship days, uh, that they draw a source of audio for the mic transmitter and then feed through the mic amp from the actual um, audio outputs. And see, this becomes a common fault so that you've got two areas of commonality. No actual audio that you can hear and no audio on your SSB transmission so that sort of s tells you that maybe one problem causing two things you know so that's how you've got to start thinking all right my battery's about to go flat on this so I think I better <laughs> be a good boy but I'll uh, get back to you on this one this one's got hours of work to go left but I, I just thought if we could go through the processes of how to think through when you're looking at a radio. You may not know all the answers, but you may be able to figure out some of them that can advise your technician a bit better as to what your radio is doing and not doing. Because it just doesn't help us to hear no transmit, no receive. Not me, I'm retired, I do nothing these days apart from play with radios. But the guys who are doing it for real, um, the more information you can give them, the more time you can save and, and generally you know, get a better idea. All right, 73s, all the best. VK3, Charlie Mike, catch ya.